When you think of cities with great cafe cultures, you probably think of Rome, Vienna, or maybe Melbourne. You probably don't think of Fujo. Now, I'm not going to say that Fujo's cafe culture is as good as, say, Rome's, but in the four years that I've been living here, I've seen cafes opening all over the city and watched a pretty cool cafe culture develop here. Now, there are lots of good cafes across Fujo, but personally, I think that it's here, in and around Yentaishan, where you can find the best example of Fujo's emerging cafe culture. It's just a small area, but there are lots of really cool, independent and unique cafes here. Yentaishan has always been one of my favorite areas of the city. It's got a really interesting history. In the mid-1800s, Fujo became a treaty port and was open to international trade. At that time, many foreigners came to live in Fujo, and it was here in Yentaishan where they built their houses, schools, churches and embassies. Many of those buildings are still here today, so you can walk around and see the old American embassy, churches built by the British, and houses where foreign traders and officials used to live. Perhaps Yentaishan's international history is part of the reason why it's become the kind of center of Fujo's cafe culture. Well, let's go off and see some of the cafes in the area. So I've come quite far down, away from the actual Yentai hill itself. And the area I'm in now is quite interesting. Just like on the hill, there are a lot of old buildings that were built during the period when Fujo was a treaty port. But on the hill is where you can find most of the official buildings. So that's where you'll see the old foreign embassies, churches, and banks. Whereas this area was actually mostly residential. And what makes the area perhaps even more interesting is that it wasn't just a foreign enclave. Local merchants and government officials also chose to build their home and live here. So you had traders and officials from places like the UK, France, and America living next door to local business people and politicians. I think it must have been a really interesting place to live. So this is Fuyuenmi Ihao. It was opened quite recently by three local girls. And one of the things that I think is really, really great about this place is the building itself and how sympathetically the girls have renovated it. They left the outside exactly the same, and on the inside they've kept a lot of the original features, like the floor and the stairs. They've also done things like use reclaimed materials from this building and other old buildings to make some of the furniture here. Like this table, which is actually a big, heavy, old door. So when you come here, you can start to get a real feel for the history of this area. <laughs> There's a local group that researches and catalogues the history of all the old buildings in Fujo. I spoke to them about this building and they said that it was built around 1930, but there aren't any records of who the building actually belonged to. However, they think that, based on the architecture, it was most likely built by a British guy. It's kind of cool to think that, back in the 1930s, there may have been a British guy sat here, drinking tea and relaxing. And now, after almost 100 years, and after China has gone through so many changes, it's kind of come full circle, and there's another British guy sat here, drinking tea and relaxing. So I'm going now to Coffee Yard, and Coffee Yard is a nice little cafe that opened not so long ago. One of the things that I really like about Coffee Yard is that it's very secluded, almost hidden away. You wouldn't know it was there unless somebody actually told you. Say hello. So this is actually the top of Coffee Yard. It's a little terrace that they have. The cafe itself is underneath, built into the hill, almost like a little cave. But I really like this little terrace. Um, on a warm summer's evening, it's a great place to just relax with your friends, have a coffee or maybe a beer. 
and it's really quiet and peaceful. Even though actually there's a road not very far away, you can't really hear anything. So they've got a really big selection of coffees and teas here. It's a really big menu. They've also got a really good selection of imported European beers as well. So if it's a bit later at night and you want to, you know, not drink coffee, you can do that here too. What I have? Um, oh, uh, <笑>在這裡做自己喜歡的事情在那一棟啊其實它也是屬於有百年歷史的它是一個華僑的一個主屋這邊就是我們原來的原創音樂人的好缸你看原來有拍那種<笑> 老师, so, before I came to China, I used to live in Nottingham. And Nottingham's a city where it's really easy to find live music. There's gigs and open mic nights across the city every day of the week. So when I moved to Fuzhou, I kind of missed that because Fuzhou is not a city where it's easy to find live music. And that's one of the reasons I was so happy to discover Coffee Yard, because they have stuff like this all the time, where you can see local artists playing, or sometimes they'll just have people sat outside playing guitars and singing songs, and it's a really nice, fun environment. now and I'm going to go for one more drink in Mr. Blue. Mr. Blue is one of Yen Tai Shan's older cafes. It opened back in 2010. It was actually the first ever cafe that I went to in Fuzhou. Now just like most cafes, Mr. Blue opens early and they sell really great coffee here but I actually prefer to come in the evening and have a real drink. They've got a good selection of spirits and a pretty big cocktail menu. I don't really go to bars very often so this is a great place for me to come and just relax with my friends and have a drink. Hey, ni hao. Hey, hello. How are you? Hello. Hello. Uh, give me a cup of tea. 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 Tea and it had a pretty big impact on me. Now, I'm not going to say that this cafe was the reason I moved to Fuzhou, but it was a small influence on my decision. Knowing that I could find cafes like this in Fuzhou helped me to realize that this would be a city that I would be happy to live in. What I really like about this place is the atmosphere. Coming in here, it's almost like I'm escaping. If I've had a really stressful day or a busy week, I can come in here and I can just have a drink and relax and I'm kind of getting away from all of that. So those are just three of the cafes that I like in Yen Tai Shan. There's actually a lot more. Like I said earlier, you can find good cafes across Fuzhou, but there really does seem to be something special about this area that's led to the creation of this really cool cafe culture. I don't really know exactly what it is. Maybe it's the international history, maybe it's the nice old buildings, or maybe it's just the people that come here. I'm not sure. But whatever it is, I'm glad that it's here, and I really enjoy coming to Yen Tai Shan and having coffee and relaxing.